If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. I am so high, I can hear everyone. Oh, I am so high, I can hear everyone. Oh, by heaven, no heaven, don't hear me. And they say that. Here's what I think of you deciding this was a movie you should sin. To live a life of responsibility. A life she can never be a part of. Except by constantly getting kidnapped and requiring rescue. Which is exactly Peter's point and why they eventually break up. This is the danger of being a public superhero. The villains probably can't beat you, but they sure as hell can get to your loved ones. This is why it always amazes me when a superhero's friends get mad at them for not revealing themselves to them. It's like, I did it to save your life, you dumbass. Pizzeria misspells bleaker on their helmet decals. I like that this is an actual cinema sin. Since you're from Tennessee, it's obvious that you looked this up, probably in the goose section of IMDb. The sin here isn't that you looked it up, but that you overlooked this is a reference to Doctor Strange. That's right, kiddos. Sam Raimi was doing Doctor Strange references before you even knew who that was. I will lose the customer forever to Pizza Yurt. Did the customer tell you he was going to go to Pizza Yurt if you didn't deliver these pizzas on time? Because that's odd that in all of New York City you worry about only one pizza place taking your business. Now, I don't know how this works in New York City, but here in Los Angeles, pizza places typically deliver to homes that are at least somewhat near the parlor. This would suggest that Pizza Yurt is close to Joe's Pizza, which is why Aziz would be cognizant of losing business to them. Okay, so Peter comes out of the janitor closet because he had to change out of his Spider-Man outfit, but how did this receptionist miss Spider-Man with a bunch of pizzas walking into the janitor closet in the first place? Mysterious ceiling panel? Or... Is he Batman? The movie is clearly implying that Peter entered this closet through the roof. And since you mentioned the mysterious ceiling panel, it's clear you've never played a Spider-Man game because they have you entering buildings through the ventilation shafts all the damn time. <laughs> Here's the Avengers review. My old lady got a bigger Hulk than that. Exactly, or at least a Hulk that makes sense. If you want my review of that game, here's the review. <laughs> Peter tries to sell a Photoshop picture as a real photo. Does. Peter does sell a Photoshop picture as a real photo. Oh, gotcha, you, jerk! Peter apparently attends Assface University. Welcome to New York City. So, how are things going at Oscorp? Oh, they're great. I'm head of special projects. What? How many f***ing years have passed since the last movie? Aunt May later says it's two. That's nowhere near long enough for Harry, as portrayed in these movies, to ever be anything at Oscorp other than head of half-assing or manager of macking on chicks. Jeremy has never heard of nepotism. I assume his head would explode if he ever watched a Korean drama. We're about to make a breakthrough on fusion. Fusion, 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 fusion. Man, Hollywood really knows how to jump on the bandwagon and ride it for decades, don't they? You know, it would be helpful if you actually mentioned what it is you're referencing. You might as well have said every movie includes daytime. You know because the sun is nuclear fusion too. We're actually funding one of your idols, Pete, Otto Octavius. I'm writing a paper on him. I know, what a crazy coincidence. He just said it's one of his idols. Writing a paper on someone you idolize isn't a coincidence, it's goddamn third grade. Hey. Hey, you're still here. Yeah, I mean, this is the house where you got verbally abused and shit. Why the fuck would you stick around after the party to hang there? Because it's still her family's home? Jeremy really thinks someone would go to a party that is next door to her own and never once go home because of past familial arguments. Did Beethoven sleep before he wrote the fifth? Did Bernoulli sleep before he found the curves of quickest descent? Brown nosing. Or this is one of those rare moments Sam Raimi remembered Peter Parker as a genius? He was studying science and I was studying English literature. And I was trying to explain the theory of relativity. <laughs> wow, that must have been one hell of an opening line to talk to a girl. Hello, my name is Otto Octavius. Measurements of various quantities are relative to the velocities of observers. I'm going to a symposium on quantum mechanics later. You should come. 
Cool joke, bro. But you're mischaracterizing what this scene is saying. The part you cut out reveals that Rosie was just as interested in Otto because while he was explaining relativity, she was trying to explain T.S. Eliot. If you want to get a woman to fall in love with you, feed her poetry. Never fails. It fails. Well, yeah, if you're in Tennessee. Peter's spidey sense is blissfully unaware of danger 30 feet behind him. He says while showing a scene of Peter's spidey sense warning him and removing him from the danger. Wrestler announcer guy. Sending any scene that involves Bruce Campbell in a Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie. Otto skips over his f***ing miraculous cerebellum attached smart bionic arm invention to get to what ultimately is his failed fusion reactor experiment. No, Jeremy. He actually makes mention of them too. But which is more important, potentially infinite energy solving the fossil fuel climate change crisis or metal arms that would benefit far fewer people and have the potential to make someone go crazy? I developed this inhibitor chip to protect my higher brain function. Another miraculous invention glossed over like it's nothing. What other world-changing inventions has Otto created and tossed aside in his path to fusion? Again, the inhibitor chip is a part of the arms. It prevents the arms from controlling him. This is two sins for the same thing. Keep calm. It's only a spike. Brilliant, thoughtful scientist thinks that this is just a spike. Which he has almost certainly experienced before and thought this was the same. You think scientists just do demonstrations without having done the experiments beforehand? Jeremy doesn't know shit about science. No! We interrupt the Spider-Man movie to bring you Revenge of the Sith. It's almost like Revenge of the Sith came out after this movie. Peter just happens to be at the bank when Doc Ock decides to rob it. Yeah, so what's your point? Spidey sense is kind of gone, isn't it? Besides that exact thing being one of the main plot points of this movie, no, if it were, Aunt May would be as dead as disco right now. Oh, that boy of yours is a real hero. Irony. Yes, that's what the movie is saying, Jeremy. Hand her over! Of course! Because this can't be a ruse at all. We're now at the point in the movie where CinemaSins is simply reacting to a movie they're watching, opposed to pointing out what is wrong with that movie and why. Man, it's a good thing she brought this umbrella, even though it's the sunniest day ever. And let me stop you right there, because you think people wouldn't bring umbrellas on the sunniest day ever. I'm telling you, Jeremy has never met a Korean in his life. Mary Jane just happens to be dating J. Jonah Jameson's son. It would be nice if you could explain why this is a sin of this movie. And I just want you all to know that the beautiful Miss Mary Jane Watson has just agreed to marry me. This is what we call an orgy of evidence that Peter's life sucks ass right now. Yes, because simply narrating what is going on in the scene is explaining why it's something wrong with the movie. Also, narration. I mean, this is a nasty spill, and if the webs aren't working, wouldn't the super strength also be failing? Even with super strength, can you survive a fall like this? That's a hilarious question, considering you probably can't think of any depiction of super strength that doesn't come with super durability. Think about it. In order for super strength to be a thing, you'd also have to come with the durability, because picking up a bus would crush you otherwise. It's also funny that you think his powers are an on-off switch instead of a gradient. You notice how he doesn't immediately need to use his glasses in this scene, or that he's still able to stick to walls somewhat? These blurry extras are all smiling and watching Tobey Maguire do this silly walk take. Real New Yorkers did not stop and stare at silly walkers. That might be true, but it's irrelevant. They're laughing at Peter because he fell. The bit, oh, raindrops are falling on my head. The borderline is tau equals zero. The eigenvalues are... 0.23 electron volts. No! Sinning Spider-Man for being a genius. Give me a 50 bucks. I could get more than that on eBay. All right, 100. This guy accepts a measly $100 for the Spidey costume because Jonah and the movie just usher him out without an argument. <laughs> this guy brought the Spider-Man costume to Jameson with the intention of selling it. Let's just say he's not exactly driving with all four wheels. Your father only obsessed over his work. Discount Alfred Pennyworth. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie cliche. Kill Spider-Man. We'll give you all the tritium you need. Or you could just torture Harry now and get it that way. And if he winds up accidentally killing Harry, he'd never know the location of the most precious element on the planet. Where are all my comic books? Oh, those dreadful things. I gave those away. Aunt May is a Philistine. <laughs> That's rich, coming from the dude whose entire mantra is the books don't matter. This is a case of the pot calling the kettle stupid, is what I'm saying. Henry and I agree. We don't see his picture in the paper anymore. Was there a chance you might disagree about that? Nice scene manipulation. Maybell is responding to Henry asking Peter where Spider-Man is. She's saying they both agree on the question and follows that up by saying they don't see him anymore. I'm aware that I have to explain movies to you, but damn, English too? 
I guess Peter never needed Spidey powers to survive falls like this. Just like in the Winter Soldier video, I'm going to point out that this was a practical stunt, and considering the stuntman survived, yeah, you don't need spider powers to survive this. Wow, lucky for Peter and MJ that his powers just happened to start working again one second before they were both crushed by a car. Here's the thing that most people don't understand about this movie. Peter never actually loses his powers. His inner conflict causes them to go dormant, and once his mind becomes clear again, they manifest. Sam Raimi likened it to the storyline in the comics where Spider-Man catches the flu and his abilities go dormant. Just like when we have a cold, our ability to taste goes away. Once you become healthy again, that chicken noodle soup f***ing bangs. That should definitely have killed him. Except you just send a scene where they show his abilities have returned. Mary Jane is in some kind of danger cliche. So what you're saying is this fairly comic inaccurate movie is actually following the comics for once? Jeremy is a Philistine. Even though Peter's mind believed that he was no longer Spider-Man, the power of boners is stronger. Again, you literally explicitly say that his powers have returned in the scene with the car. Why would he have no reason to believe he's back if he just dodged a flying car with his spider sense and survived being thrown into a brick wall? And no, we're not going to let you get away with saying boner either. Hey guys, quick question. Where is this web attaching itself when Spider-Man swings over to this clock tower? A building taller than this clock tower. This is New York. There's always a taller building. Unless you're on One World Trade Center. Any more bright ideas? During a life or death situation, this guy decides to be a dick to the one guy who can save everyone on the train. <laughs> Welcome to New York City. You caught at saving a train? My mother-in-law's more man than you. She's got bigger balls, too. That is one great shot of paper football. Seriously, not removing a sin for the train scene. This scene is literally the reason people are so nostalgic about this film. Because Lord knows this movie is aged like Lindsay Lohan. Wait a second. Earlier he was unconscious and then woke up and was so weak that Doc Ock didn't have any trouble taking him prisoner. Now he wakes up from a second coma and suddenly he's fully rested and strong? Yes, Jeremy. Dr. Octopus knocked him out and Harry woke him up by taking his mask off. It's almost like you're not even watching the movie that you're watching. Mary Jane is in some kind of danger cliche. Yeah, you said that. Robotic smart arms have the same weakness as the aliens and signs. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that not only isn't a sin of this movie, but is also not even something the movie is hinting at, let alone saying. Sometimes... To do what's right, we have to be steady and give up the thing we want the most, even our dreams. And with great power comes great responsibility. It means Luca Brazzi sleeps with the fishes. Rosebud. Here's looking at you, kid. That escalated quickly. Coffee is for closers only. Jeremy makes six pop culture references where only one of them has anything to do with this movie, and it's tangential at best. <sighs> Mary Jane is in some kind of danger cliche. Yo, my man. You said that. I guess Aunt May was wrong in the first movie. Spider-Man is Superman. This is because you don't know shit about comics. Spider-Man has super strength, usually around the 10 to 20 ton range. This means he can easily lift a bus and throw that shit like a frisbee if Venom ever got froggy. Look, in the first movie, Norman became insane after he tried to inject himself with that serum. What the f*** happened to your microphone, my dude? This shit went from studio voiceover quality to flat earther podcast. A review made by a guy that does not understand a single thing in this movie. Leave it to the pros that know a few facts about what they mock or sin. You are absolutely clueless, and mocking things that you do not understand makes you look like a complete idiot. Let me say it again. What an idiot. I can do a 60 minute video about what is wrong with this video and highlight how stupid you are. Jesus. And you have a platform? World is indeed going to shit. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Ha <laughs>